Now that we have our table set up in the database, what we need to do is add some data. And maybe then we can start looking at adding more tables, and more, more data, so that we can put together interesting SQL queries and maybe building up little SQL scripts, uh, which is the whole point of what we're trying to practice here. In the emp grade, employee grade table, we've only got two columns. One is a grade ID that is a primary key and can't be null, and then a, a related maximum salary for that uh, ID, for that grade. We could put other columns in here, such as uh, company pension, bonus scheme, etc. But we'll stick with these two for now. In the second table, we have this sales team table, and this is a list of the employees, what the location is, and what their grade is. And the idea is that this is perhaps some dynamic data that's changing moderately frequently, but the uh, grade ID up here and its related salary, well, that should be fairly static and maybe that's only getting updated annually. So as a new employee comes on board, or maybe they, they get promoted, this grade will change. But when we enter their grade here, it needs to be a valid grade, and you know we need to be able to go off to the employee grade table and then look at the other data that relates to that. So this we need to convert into what we call a foreign key, so that the foreign key or the data relating to that foreign key will then come from uh, up here. So first of all, let's go and put some data in, and then we can start looking at how we do this, uh, make this a foreign key to uh, ensure some data integrity. So let's go and put some data in the employee grade table. And we, again, we can do this two ways, either by right clicking, and if we select edit top 200 rows, we'll get this uh, sort of design table up again. So we'll come up with a grade ID, we'll call it 001. We know that's an integer, so that should be fine. Okay. And salary max, let's call that again, it's an integer, let's call it 10,000. We click out. So let's have a grade of 2 and 20. Okay. So now, if we look at these, we'll be able to know that there's some data in them. So we can do that with a query, as I'm sure you know. So we select everything from the employee grade table, and here's the data we entered. The next way is to enter some data using uh, a SQL query. So to insert data using the SQL query, what we need to do is type insert into, and we choose the table, which is obviously emp grade. We define the columns that we want to enter data into. In this case, it's all of them. So it's grade ID and salary max. And then we state the values. Values, which in this case is uh, number three and 30,000. We'll just terminate with a semicolon. So if I highlight this and put hit F5, it says one row affected. Now I'll highlight this one and hit F5, and we've added our third column in here. So now what we need to do is relate this to the grade here, or relate, rather relate, relate this to the grade in here. But what we'll do first of all is go through and add some data into this table as well. So I went ahead and entered some data into our sales team table, as you can see down here. And I did that by using the, uh, if you right click and select the uh, edit top 200 rows. But what we'll do now is write another insert statement 
to get the grade of three. If you remember, we put uh, three employee grades, but we've not used that one yet. So we'll enter that, or we'll create a new user to enter that, uh, to use that grade in the sales team table. So we insert into, and we can drag this over, sales team. Then we select our columns. So we've got employee ID, first name, last name, location, and grade. Then what we do, we define our values. Okay, so we'll have employee ID of five, name of, let's say, Andrew. And because this is a string, we need to put single quotations around it. So let's say Andrew, know, John's, let's say, oh, hang on, single quotes again, uh, location of, which we have, Manchester, Manchester, and a grade of three, was it that we wanted? Okay, so we have an employee ID, first name, last name, location, grade. We'll highlight this, hit F5, one row affected. So let's go and have a look at what that was. And there is our extra user with the final grade that we want to see. So the last thing we want to do is make sure that this grade, which is uh, just set as a normal column down here, now becomes a foreign key so that we relate it back up to here and again that's all about data integrity and just having something a little bit more complex in our uh, little database and tables here uh, than just a bunch of you know more tables and more tables the way we do this is to right click on the table name and select design find the column which in this case is grade right click and select relationships and in the foreign key relationships, a dollar box, we click add, and we go over to here where we say, where we can see tables and columns specification. Select it, and then click over here. And what we've got is we need to select the primary key table, and the primary key table for us is coming from, from employee grade. And if we select down here, we select grade ID. That's what the primary key is in the employee grade table. And our foreign key table is obviously sales team because it just happens to be the only other table we have. And what we want is grade. So we can give it a name up here. Uh, let's see, foreign key, sales team. Well, that's fine. That's, that's, that's good enough and click OK. Actually what we'll do, we'll hit cancel on this because we'll do this using a SQL query. So let's come out of that and out of that. Close the window that opened and let's go down here to write a SQL query. So let's go ahead and make that change so that grade becomes a foreign key. What we need to do is alter the table and the table of course is sales team. What we want to do is add a constraint, a constraint, and we'll add a constraint called say foreign key. What should we call it? Uh, sales team, and it will be on grade. And we need to just define what the foreign key is. So GN for that didn't look right. Okay, so foreign key. Okay. I'm not typing English. Okay, there we go. Foreign key will be grade, and grade will reference or it references. References the employee grade table. 
and the primary key is grade ID that is referenced. So let's go run this, highlight an F5. And it said commands completed successfully. So if we, let's have a look here, if we right click and refresh, this has now become a foreign key. And in fact, if we go down here, we'll see this is a foreign key. So just to be clear on what the purpose of adding this foreign key was, if we now go and try to add a new employee record in the sales team, let's do the do it this way because it's easy. So we'll add a new record number six. Um, this is the hardest thing coming up with names. So we'll enter Stephen, we'll enter Jones, and we'll say they're from uh, Balwick of Jersey, I think it is. And if we enter a grade of say 99, we get a warning here to say no row was updated. And why is that? Because the insert statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint FX sales team grade that we, uh, sorry, FK sales team grade that we just set up. Conflict occurred in the database in the table employee grade. So the conflict occurred in here because of course, okay, there is no 99 in here. So if we, was there a four? I can't remember now. No, no. okay. Let's put them to a three then. Bingo. And if we close this off and then look again in the sales team, we should have that extra record just gone in just fine. Obviously in a database, we're gonna have this kind of relationship. So for our purposes, this is merely about, you know, sort of tying these uh, databases, sorry, these tables together and making it a uh, more realistic example. So what you could do now is go on to create uh, a bunch of tables, add lots of clever data in there, interesting data, use different data types and uh, you know different lengths of data etc so that when we uh, then start to write SQL queries obviously we can make those SQL queries nice and elaborate but that's the basics of it we've now got to a point where we've installed SQL Server uh, Management Studio we have set up a database we've set up tables and we've entered data so the only thing to do now is quickly look at how we delete data so just to finish off what we'll do is look at the, I guess, the crudest way of removing data from a table. And that is simply using delete and delete from. In this case, let's say delete from sales team. And we can use a where, and let's say where, what last name. equals and we'll pick any of these let's just say Jones uh, obviously we can have you know or like and so on but we'll cover that in another video this is just a round off in case you enter any of this in a way that you don't like we'll just round off this video so one row affected let's have a look at the sales team table again then highlight and hit F5 and there we go Jones is now gone from the table so that's everything for this small set of videos what we'll do we'll follow up with perhaps some uh, you know key SQL query statements or keywords etc that we might want to use on our practice database